Hey gang, quick recording to, uh, first of all, welcome everybody new to City of Heroes to, to the game. Um, I've been around since the old school, and uh, I'm very happy to see that NCSoft has granted a license to Homecoming regarding being able to play. I've noticed a big uptick in traffic on the servers, and I thought, well, there's a lot of things that are kind of just a little bit weird uh, regarding the game itself. And uh, I figured I'd put a place in that you could actually go to find some things out that may not make sense and maybe are a little hard to find regarding the the forums itself so the first thing is obviously character creation um note here you can actually do city of heroes freedom or going rogue uh, there's also uh, another option here as well we'll talk about just a minute um, but yes this is the standard game Going rogue is basically um, uh, starting in a place called Praetoria, and um, you'll be there for the first 20 levels, effectively. Um, I would recommend, for the most traffic, starting in, in City of Heroes Freedom, and uh, possibly as a hero, because you're going to see most of the help is going to be there for you. If you want to brave areas that are less, less visited, definitely check out the, vi the villain portion of this. Uh, or go to City of Heroes Rogue. The origins themselves don't make a ton of difference. Um, basically, if it's something that's going to actually match what you want for your character itself, if it's part of a mutation for it, if it's part of magic, say, anything you want for technology, or if it's just something that actually was, was God-given and born to the character itself, just match up something. All it does, basically, is it gives you... Um, it defines where you can buy origins or enhancements later on, I'm sorry. And it'll also kind of steer some of the the, the missions you're going to go on. But ultimately, you can go on pretty much all the missions you want anyhow. So let's start out here. Um, and let's see what I can come up with for names. No pressure. Don't know why, but let's just see if that's available. Okay, that's available. Let's continue on. All right. These are kind of the criteria you've been hearing for forever. Before there was actually tank and, and all that stuff, um, City of Heroes was actually saying tank. Um, so tank for us is going to be one of two different options. It's going to be either, uh, I guess there's four options, uh, brute or tanker. Um, brute is used to be the evil version of the tanker. Basically, it does more damage, can take less damage slightly. Uh, Peace Bringer and Warshade are very complicated. I would recommend not starting out with those two. Uh, they're basically aliens, and you have multiple different forms. Fun to play, a little limited regarding how you start out. Melee damage. You may notice in melee damage, Brute is also here. Uh, it is a melee character. Scrapper is basically melee DPS uh, Stalker is equivalent of pretty much every sort of of rogue in all the different things, all the different games that are out there. Um, Tanker is apparently here as well. Arachno Soldiers and Widows, um, those were on the evil side. Uh, these are characters that you can start out with that will eventually specialize in something later on. Um, let's come back. Range damage. Blaster is exactly what you think. Uh, Corruptor is basically a... Well, you can read it right here. Uh, Defender is the healer, the quote healer. Uh, many of them could do damage as well. They're more support tourists by design. Sentinel is basically a tank mage. Doesn't tank well, doesn't mage well. Um, but it does both things pretty, pretty decently and it makes you more survivable. And we've already talked about these guys. Crocatrol. Controller Dominator. Controller is the... All they do is basically crowd control. There are multiple different forms of it. Uh, what you do is you slow things. You make things harder for them to hit you. You make things easier to hit. Um, you you buff your characters regarding... Your, your class regarding... Or your party regarding damage. You debuff their class. Uh, and eventually you end up with a pet that you can't control uh, that follows you around and does damage. Dominator is less buffy, more damaging. Uh, it'll end up with roughly the same types of things for control. Not quite as effective at controlling, but it does do more direct damage. Uh, I'm a big fan of controllers. 
support, we're going to see a lot of the same faces. Uh, controller, Corrupter, Defender. So Mastermind is a little new for us. Mastermind is kind of what you'd expect. Um, Mastermind is something where you start out with um, right at the very get-go. You can start out with one minion that you can command to go around and do things. Uh, there's going to be zombies, fire imps, there's going to be soldiers, ninjas, um, animals, like wolves. Bunch of different things. It is more of a passive build where you spend a lot of your time um, taking care of the things that actually do damage. Um, there's more standing around for it. Kind of difficult to get into regarding the, the very beginning. I'd recommend something that's more involved. Come back, circle back, and look at Mastermind later on because it is a lot of fun to play, uh, especially if you're soloing a lot. And we've talked about pretty much all of these. The Rachno Soldier does have a bit of pets towards the end. So let's pick a class. Let's go with... Let's go with Scrapper. Why not? I have all the different options for this. Now every power set's got a primary and secondary power. Uh, for scrappers, uh, this impacts how you attack. The different specialties regarding how you do things. And the secondary powers for this class are armors. So the type of armor you want to run. Um, I really recommend you find something that really fits what you'd want to play. Don't worry about the numbers at this point in time. Just get in and find something that you like the look of. So let's do dual blades. I'm going to skip past this first attack and go right to the second because we can't take unlimited powers. And for my armor or defense, Let's go with willpower. Why not? And all the descriptions are here. You have a higher, greater tolerance to pain than others. Slightly resistance, all types of damage. Always on, cost no endurance. And this is actually an active power. This is the toggle. So I'm going to take this one for now. All right. Possibly the best part of the game coming up here. You can tweak whatever you want regarding body type. You can only be male if you're the huge type, uh, and you can make them truly huge. And uh, if you want to go a different route, um, you know, you, you, you can make some, some truly top-heavy characters. Um, Super. Anyhow, let's go with something more standard. We'll just go generic across the board here. All right, costume sets. Now, it's worth noting over here, the costume sets are currently linked. There's a primary and a secondary for, for every everything you're looking at. So this is a costume one. We're not going to worry about it right now, but we will actually show you the linking portion of it. So it changes all the primaries to whatever that is. And... The secondary, since they're linked currently, will change all the secondary colors. Now, if I want to unlink them, I can go piece by piece. So, let's go back to link currently, and we'll show you some of the custom sets. Basically, the custom sets allow us to go in... Oh my god, I can't take pink. Let's go black. No, let's go orange for that. You can kind of go through, and if you want to do a quick, a quick start... Uh, you can actually pick any one of these sets to begin with. I recommend going through and seeing what you like. You can always come back and you can tweak them. Honestly, the the character creation process is one of the best I think I've ever played with. and You can make so many different things that look so cool. But let's say, let's see, we have a... We have... Dual swords. Let us go with. Do I have a pirate somewhere in here? Yar. Celestial barbarian tuxedo. Don't see one. Uh, 
X. Uh, let's go with... Sure. Let's do classic steampunk, but not these color matches. All right. So here we've got just a set we can go through, and I can tweak any one of these things in here. I can shape the, the shape of my face, my face itself, um, my hat. If I want to try a different hat. Play around in it. I'm going to zoom in, and let's uncheck this. And for my hat color now, I still have the primary and secondary. But I'm going to change my primary and my hat to, let's say, we'll go with a different brown. A hat of red. I did kind of go through piece by piece on this. Uh, let's go with that. All right, zoom back out again. We have all these different categories, and all these categories have got subcategories. It's a little lot. It's it's a lot to walk through, but experiment, have fun. Um, some of them, uh, when you look at them, they'll have a subcategory underneath it that actually has basically a color scheme that can work with that character. So, let's say we want to go with. Um, Baron with Vest. I can go with that. I can go Occult. I can go Dragon. Dragon, I believe, is on the back. So, I don't really care for the colors, but let's continue on from here anyhow. Uh, also, at any point in time, if you find something that you like and you want to, say, save that, but maybe not keep the character, go ahead and come in and save your character. Type in a name here. And you can save it. Now when I come back to load that later on, one of the options is going to be treasure. Er. All right, from here, let's keep going. Actually, let me pick my weapons real quick. If you have a, a character that has weapons, you can select them. Uh, do I want scimitars, longsword. This is right and left, by the way. Dagger. Lots of options here. A rapier. Let's go with a rapier for our strong hand. Oh, not, not that rapier, just a regular one. And the left blade, let's go with a... Main gosh. And let's change the color of that guard, because that's a lot to look at. And we'll change the blade to, we can go red, yellow. Let's just go with silver for that. I'm not a big fan of the black boots or the, the gold boots. Let me kick back up here, go to boots, and let's change that to something more brown. Sure. Let's do that. All right. Next. Every one of our powers is customizable. So if I want to come in here and I want to say, you know what, I want to make this have different colors for that. I can actually go in. Well, I can't really change this at all. <laughs> I guess I stand stand correct. The dual blade doesn't have any items for customization. However, willpower does. So uh, we can go into willpower and we can actually do globally across the board bright. And what that does is when we activate powers for our secondaries, it'll have certain colors for glows. We can change that with primary and secondary. Or if we want to, we can actually go the dark version of that. And if you want to go stealthy, we can just do minimal and it won't show anything for it. I'm going to go minimal right now and let's keep on going. So I have a magic scrapper. 
Um, honestly, I probably should have picked a different origin, but it doesn't matter. You know what, if I want a different origin, let's go back and let's go, let's go science. And we'll just next our way through that. And now we're science. So this is everything we have. We don't want to talk about super, super groups for now. It's basically a guild. Um, you'll have options to go in there. Um, various different function keys will offer battle cries. Um, if I hit F10 in game, it'll actually yell Spood in this case. Um, or let's go have at me. Here's where you can actually go in and put a bio, a basic description of your character. And other characters can look at your bio and see it, something about you. So if you're artistic and you like to, to get a good backstory for it, here's the place to put it. Now we can go in and play the tutorial if you're a first timer for tutorial. Or first time playing it, I recommend a tutorial. Um, let's go hero side, so we'll go to Outbreak. And let's enter the game. Alright, this is the screen you're going to interact with mostly. We've already got badges. Up here, this is our directions. And we can see the yellow spot saying, hey, that's where we need to go. Um, most things happen from up here. Here's how we activate the trays. I'd strongly recommend uh, pulling up a map. Um, the map is right here. And once we hit map for it, we can actually, we're not locked in having it here. We can detach it from that window and drag it somewhere. If I want to close it, I hit the red dot that closes it, or I can do it somewhere else, like here. It will maintain that spot for you. And I recommend doing that kind of across the board for us. So um, here's the powers I have in the lower right hand side. We won't talk so much about salvage or recipes at this point in time. We will talk a little bit about enhancements once we get some. All right, so our first task is here. That's our contact. Let's go talk to him. W-A-S-D, space to jump, space also to fly. Um, it goes up when you fly. Click on Available Missions. Let's accept that task. And down here we've got different things regarding chat. Uh, I really recommend you go off of global because when you type in global, everybody in the server gets to hear it. So. I'm just going to go to team right now. In case I type something, it'll just go out to my team. If you want to, though, you can definitely go local. And it'll say it's something to somebody around you. You can broadcast it inside the zone. Um, oh, that's nice. Thank you. Uh, your friends, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. Let's go ahead and leave. We need to deliver the serum to Dr. Miller. It will see our waypoint over there. 117 away. Uh, we can go ahead and toggle on sprint here. Let's also do this. This is our armor. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a second bar here by hitting up. And then we're still on number one. Let's go to number two here. We get rid of this one. I'm going to slide this one up. I'm going to turn that armor on. And here's my options. Now I have a punch and I have the built-in brawl. Everybody's got brawl. Uh, temporarily, I'm going to auto do that so that whenever it's available, it will punch for me. You do that by clicking on control, holding the control down, and left clicking. Now, anytime I'm within range of something I can punch, I'm going to punch it. Since I have so few attacks, it's very helpful. Let's go ahead and uh, do our thing. Uh, Paragon City, familiar yourself, familiarize yourself, yada, yada, yada. Terminal, click on to read information it has. It's going to tell me to go to this terminal. All right. Okay. And now we got to talk to who? Task complete, return to this contact. Let's go back and talk to Officer Flint. All right, 
Next contact is Office of Parks down there. By the way, there are options as well if you're getting just spammed regarding things. If you don't want to have global uh, or general in your face, you can right click this, go to Edit Tab, and you can remove uh, things from this. So currently we've got general here. I'm going to remove general so I don't get all the general stuff. You can do that for anyone and you can add things in there if you like as well. Then you can that will allow me to tackle through that, but I'm no longer to be monitoring that. And for a long time, this is how you're going to be getting around until at least level four. Used to be level 14. All right. Treasure. -er -er -er. Left click on the icon to use the power. Right click on the icon to learn about the power. Use the power tab to add new powers to your tray whenever you achieve them. All right, let's ask about missions. Talk to Professor Hoffman. That appears to be Professor Hoffman. Gray or easy green. This is the same as conning systems in every other game. If you find something that's purple, you, you, you may not want to get involved in it unless you're in a group that can actually handle it. Um, so this is a, a standard con um, where you consider what, what's actually happening. So we can tell that, that one's kind of difficult. That one's really hard all the way across the board. All right. All right. I told you to uh, if you use the power, it takes time to recharge. I kind of go small, grow larger. All right. Let us go attack that guy. Yeah. Now remember, it's automatically punching every time that we want to do something. It's gonna punch there. Here's my dual swords. All right, that's the gist. Let's go talk to Officer Parks again. And let's go ahead and leave. Two thugs in the southwest defeat two contaminated. Southwest is going to be over here. Hello, contaminated. I have my one attack. I'm gonna keep using that. All right. Defeat two thugs. Return to contact. By the way, if you are in a party and you have a mission selected um, that you want to do, definitely click on it and then select task, and it'll highlight it for everybody else as well. All right, next contact is Sergeant Hicks. Available missions. Can receive my inspirations? Sure. All right, inspirations. Inspirations are like potions. Um, you can click on them. You can click on the number that is associated with them. Uh, I think it's F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Um, normally when you get to be fully out, or you can actually left click on them with your mouse. Um, but either way, you're going to use what you have. But they are effectively potions. Um, defeat four thugs using inspirations. Defeat four contaminated. Let's go ahead and select that. So it's now red for everybody in my group, which is me. Let's just go around the corner and take care of some business. Three more. I don't know that I need to actually use my inspirations to actually do that. 
Uh, and by the way, star or scrappers can crit, as you just saw. Uh, also, um, stalkers can as well. All right, let's return to contact. We are jumping. One of the options you're going to have when you first log in is you're going to, they're going to ask you if you need help or if you offer help or none of the above. All right, let's learn about enhancements. Enhancement levels. I'm not going to read this to you. But basically what this means is every power that you have, you can actually enhance to a certain degree. Um, either by things you buy or by things you can actually get from the auction house. And we'll talk about that just in just a minute when we actually uh, get some enhancements. Ah, I found an enhancement. Nice. All right. So let's take a look at our enhancements here. I got two enhancements. Damage and damage. By 33.3%. So let's go ahead and manage that. I only have the one attack. And these look like they're the same for both. Let's go ahead and just add that up there. You can actually see what type of enhancement sets can go in there. And when you click on it, only the ones you can put it into will light up for you. Let's go ahead and say yes to that and then continue on. So now whenever I attack with that uh, that power, I'm going to do 33.3% more damage. There's a limit. Uh, basically it's 100% uh, as a rule of thumb. So what that means is if you have three of those same damage origins in there, um, you really can't get above that. So um, putting six in doesn't really get you much. So first door mission, let's go inside. All right. First thing I gotta tell you is do not get upset with the people who made the game. I'm going to toggle off my uh, my sprint. The game interiors will make no sense compared to the game or the game's exteriors. Sometimes you're going to go into a tiny building that has massive interiors like a TARDIS and sometimes it's a reverse. Things don't make sense. But we need to find formula to feed all thugs and rescue flower knights. So let's go and do that. Not a lot you can do at level one. All right, she's going to help me. And here's where we have to go. That's the computer up there. Let's go beat up on more people. Oh, I crushed that guy. All right. This is a glowy, aka Wubba. Uh, it'll become a very familiar sound in the game. Highly recommend you have headphones for the game because uh, it will tell you where it is based on the direction of the sound. And a lot of the games are going to be finding things that's going to be making this particular sound. Alright, let's defeat all of the thugs. I'm going to guess there's some upstairs. Yeah. Pam, level two. Woo, woo, woo. You're going to notice you get a bit of a level buff right here. Currently, I'm buffed up like crazy, so I'd be able to actually take out a little bit more than I could normally. Uh, unfortunately, by the time I get anywhere, those buffs are going to go away. Let's go ahead and hit exit. Exit will exit the mission no matter where you are in it. If you're like eight levels deep in it, 
When you're done with the mission, hitting exit will pop you out to the front door. All right. Return to our contact. Our contact is over there. Let's go back to Sprint. As a, an aside, um, clicking on your powers will show you all of the powers you currently have, all the ones you're going to get. So you can kind of see what's happening here. Uh, it also gives you the option of dragging and dropping. I have a Trank Dart, which is something I can throw at people and potentially tranquilize them. Let's go ahead and pull that over and drop it. That's pretty much all I have. All right. Visit Miss Liberty. And this is the regular game. Here's the question, whether or not you want to have help me um, so that people are more inclined to a answer questions. There's actually a help me channel for people new in the game and there are helpers uh, that will monitor that channel to answer any questions you might have in game. Reach out if you're not sure. Uh, go to the help me section under the team, ask questions. I may be one of the helpers if I'm online. It's hard to know. Uh, in this case, let's just go no so that we don't get uh, a lot of text either way. Miss Liberty is straight up ahead. Right there. Miss Liberty is the trainer for the group. And this is City of Heroes. You'll spend a lot of time here if you're a hero in Atlas Park. Here's where we train. Uh, every two levels up until level 30, you gain another power. And then it's every three levels after that. So, I have different options here. I have a Blading Strike. I have High Pain Tolerance. Those are the only two I can pick up at this point. I guess Nimble Slash as well. But I want to find information out about it. I can actually hover over it here. This is 27 points. This is 13. High Pain Tolerance says it's going to get more hit points. I'm going to be able to resist 5% of all damage. Um, I figure for me, killing something means I don't have to resist the damage it does. So I'm going to pick that. It will insert itself down here. We also have the ability to heal ourselves now. Let's go away I go. And you may also notice inside of Lady Liberty that if you wanted to, you can customize your appearance. You do have a built-in uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uniforms. You can get additional outfits that you can modify. Every one of them can be different. Um, there are hotkeys you can use to change between them, uh, or you can just change it here for K, uh, and that'll allow you to hit that menu and change whatever you want to look like. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on today, well, the last two things I want to touch on today. First thing is the play to win, vi uh, three things, I guess. Uh, the P2W, you can go into here, and if you want some initial buffs for your character um, to help you kind of get through the early levels, you can do so. I recommend coming in, taking a look at the wares. Uh, typically, you can actually add prestige enhancements. These are all free, and these will all basically increase your damage. I'm going to pick up one of each, because that's all you can have of each. You can also get prestige powers. One of the prestige powers I currently have is I have Trank Dart right here. And I can get additional ones if I want to. Like Sands of Moo is one that almost everybody gets. I'm going to pick it up for now. Uh, I'm also going to pick up... Uh, I'm going to pick up Black Wand. Am I science? I've already forgotten. Let's take a look here. ID. I am science. All right. So I can use this, but I don't do as much damage as if I use one that's made for me. So I am science. I'm going to pick up this nemesis staff. I'm going to claim that. I'm going to come down to uh, utility. I'm sorry. Let's go to travel. And let's go to movement. I can add athletic run, ninja run, or beast run. They're all exactly what you think. 
I'm going to pick up Athletic Run because it's kind of like a travel power at a very early level. So let's go ahead and find those powers. Here's Athletic Run. I'm going to drag that down here. I'm going to move my kneel down to heal things, which is just this. You regenerate quickly uh, your stamina and your health, but you are going to get hit. All right. I'm going to slide this over, and I'm going to pull in Sands of Moo and my Nemesis Staff. All right. Let's run one really quick mission here in town. I'm going to show you a couple other things real quick. You may notice right now I'm currently sprinting. And if I hit my athletic run, I'm sprinting more. And also it allows you a certain amount of jumping. So that's as high as I can jump with it off. That's as much I can jump with it, with it on. Uh, however, it does burn up stamina while it's running. Uh, you do regenerate stamina. Just watch your blue bar. Let's run a quick mission. And let's leave that on temporarily, and let's follow our waypoint. Let's take, kill five of these guys. All right, let's go in. Let's also turn off our sprints and our, our run so we get some some stuff back. Here we go. There's that power. It's a knockback. Not ideal for a scrapper, but that's okay. Now, depending on the character you pick, you may find that you're not quite as resilient to damage as I am. Um, and that's okay. Alright, there it is. So our first mission. Let's get out of here before they respawn. Let's click on our travel powers again, basically. Let's go back and talk to our dude. You may notice whenever you have a contact, you're going to have to run like one or two missions before you can actually get a telephone. At that point in time, when you try to contact them, you can do so via telephone. Alright. Let us... Look at a couple of other things real, real quick. Uh, this is your stats. If you want to go in here, you can see a little bit about yourself. This is all of your stats. All right. A couple of things to, to look at as well here. You may see off in the distance that curve structure. You are a superhero, at, but you will continue to use, uh, you'll continue to use public transportation. So uh, it is an old game regarding this. There are zones everywhere, and you need to go between zones. The way that it happens um, in Homecoming and the old times is you actually click on this. It gives you an option to go with the different zones, the level ratings on the right side. Kind of recommend you try to stick to level ratings. Uh, and once you get to that level, you'll find contacts in those zones by clicking on contacts and saying, find contact. Uh, there is something else in Homecoming to get around, and that is the Portal Corp network, which is right here. And you're able to teleport basically to any one of the zones that are listed here. Two more places to show you guys, and I'll let you go for the day. The first place is Icon. Icon is basically a costume shop, or if you want, it also will allow you to change the size and shape of your character. If you talk to the character in front, it is all just going through uh, the options for for your. Oh, I guess it's changed. You can go in and you can actually change the size for that particular character class. Uh, up until level ten, all the different costumes are free. After level 10, uh, they are not. You'll have to start paying for them. And the higher you get, level-wise, the more it costs to make changes. Back. 
out. We see the hospital over here. If you die in combat, uh, in most cases you're going to come back in whatever zone you're in to medical center. Uh, you'll be res there. There is a, a death penalty. Uh, you will never de-level. Uh, however, it will take you longer uh, to work back from debt. All right. Okay. And the last best I want to talk about is a place called Pocket D. Pocket D is, is a place between the dimensions. And it allows us to go hang out with the, the evil side, a.k.a. the red side. Uh, and we can run missions there as well. Okay. Neutral ground, no fighting. Let's go ahead and run through here. These are kind of a fast way of getting to a zone called Fault Line. Uh, you can get to Talos from here as well. Founders Falls, King's Row, and here's our Pocket D. So let's go into Pocket D. All right. This is Pocket D. This is the good side, the blue side. That's the evil side, the red side. Uh, inside of here, there's also a trainer right here called War Witch. Did the same thing you do with Lady Liberty. On this other side, there is a pay-to-win vendor that has the same things we looked at before. One thing I didn't talk about, which I'd recommend doing as well, is temporary powers. If you want to bypass the painful early levels, uh, you can do so by going in and clicking on experience boosters and just reading what it says. You can have up to eight of these. I'm sorry, up to, yeah, up to eight of these. So if you want, you can limit the amount of money you have coming in and, and maximize the experience you're getting. It's usually not that bad of a deal, although leveling is not that, that slow in the game, no matter what you do. Uh, another high point in here is something called Null the Gull, which is this little gull right up here. This gull will allow you to do certain things in the game. First thing is, I don't know what that is. Don't ask me. Uh, how do speed buffs affect me? Some character classes can buff the speed of the, of the players tremendously, um, and it can be difficult sometimes to control in, in certain maps especially. You can turn it off. You can say, you know what, I don't want them to buff to affect me. The rest of the bonuses will actually work though. Uh, I want to have Mystic Fortune. When I first got into the game, that guy read my fortune, gave me a buff. Uh, I had to interact with it saying, yes, I, I wanted to accept that. I can have it so that I always accept it no matter what. And it's usually never a bad thing. And a um, couple different things here as well. Travel power pop-up. One of the things that's a little strange is once you actually get a travel power like flight or super jump, there's a secondary power that automatically goes with it. And what will happen at it is it'll pop a second bar, or another bar above your top bar. Uh, I don't care for it, so I disable it. So that basically I, I only have the trays that I want to have. So I'm going to disable it here as well. And if I want to turn evil or one shade of evil or lesser good, I can do so here. So my options are a vigilante, rogue, or villain. If I'm a vigilante, I can hang out on the red side, but I can't start missions on the red side. I can start missions on the blue side. If I'm a rogue, I can hang out on the blue side, but I cannot start missions on the blue side. And if I'm a villain, I am the opposite of a hero. I can't go to the blue side. As a hero right now, I can't go to the red side. It just, you know, you can be shades of gray if you like. I'm going to stay as a hero. I'll show you one more thing inside of Pocket D. And that is over here. On the blue side, in the back. Alright. The Thrill Seeker badge. 
This is where you can actually run missions that are created by the community itself. And uh, a lot of them are designed simply to level you as quickly as possible. In fact, most people hang out saying they're, they're farming. Farming is just another way of gaining experience and, and equipment, although you don't really have equipment, but enhancements of different sorts. Um, I, I have no, no say in it either way. I, I have farmed. I don't find it to be exciting myself, but I don't, I'm not, I don't have a problem with people who farm. They put a lot of time and effort into it. If you want to sell anything you have, uh, there's only one vendor in Pocket T. It is up on top. Let's go take a look. Right up here behind the bar. And you can sell different things to this character. I'm going to sell some of my stuff. I'm going to keep those things. All right. And finally, before we, we exit, I'm going to show you one more piece. And that is that you can actually, uh, from any place not inside of an instance map, uh, access the auction house. Let's type in slash AH. Pulls up the auction house. If I want to find anything that may allow my character to do better at certain things, or if I want to sell things on the auction house, I can just drag them here and I can assign a point to it. Um, that's about it. So let me show you how that works for us. Uh, I'll go to Inspirations. I believe I can just drag an Inspiration over here. And I can sell this. Nobody wants it, but I could assign a value to it. And um, somebody could actually buy it, and it'll show up here. Uh, when I actually sell it, I'll be able to co collect the, the money from it. Auction House takes a fee when you post it. Auction House takes a fee when you actually get the cash back from it. That's about it. If you guys have any questions, drop me a, a line in the comment section. I'd be glad to help you out. Um, welcome to the game, and, and I'm glad that you're taking a look at it. It is something that was made by people who loved what they were doing, and uh, I certainly appreciate the effort they put into it. Have a great evening, everyone. Hey, guys. Before I forget, there's a couple other things before I let you totally go uh, that may be kind of maddening, and I'm not sure where that's located documentation-wise. But if you wanted to auto run, uh, R will automatically run and you just do it with your mouse at that point. Very handy if you want to get through a zone quickly, especially if you have flights, you just pick your spot, hit R, and you pretty much go. The other way that it can happen actually is if you hold down both mouse buttons, it will automatically presume that you actually want to auto run. So be prepared. <laughs> Either one of those two things can actually make you run off of a cliff. Uh, secondly, to rotate the mouse around your character, if you want to see, say, in front of you, uh, it is mouse button 3, which is going to be normally the scroll wheel. You push it down and you move the mouse around. Uh, it allows you to basically look at your character from different angles. And if you want to reset it back to the, to the default, it is the page down key. Page down resets. Always remember that if you're looking around and you get your mouse messed up. Page down. All right. Have a great night.